Alright, back here on Luke here. And as you guys can see in front of you, this is my old uh, kind of trusty Super Neo 29. And if you remember about two months back or so, I had made a video kind of around the games room and then discussing or talking about how the Super Neo 29 was making a little bit of uh, some arcing sounds and not turning on the way it should. The monitor was kind of flickering a little bit. So I thought today what I'd do is take this thing out and try and uh, take out the chassis on the monitor and take a look at that and see what's going on with it. Uh, just because this is my only uh, Super Neo 29 right now. I want to try and preserve it as long as I can. And uh, I don't know if this, this thing will recreate the problem or not, but uh, we'll give it another shot here. I just flipped the switch on it. It's been a while since I turned this thing on, but we'll see. Let's see if you guys will be able to uh, see anything on here. I don't know if you guys could see that, it just kind of clicked for a minute. Watch it, now it's not going to do it for me. <laughs> Nonetheless, before uh, this thing was kind of flickering and, uh, you know, kind of arcing a little bit, you know, it seemed like uh, like the power was going on it, which is kind of something similar that was happening with my uh, MVSU 4, but th all that was was just some really old solder joints on the chassis, and that seemed to fix the problem, so, I don't know, I think, nonetheless, I'm just going to take this chassis out here and give this a shot, try and clean it up. So I think maybe it might be interdependent on how cold uh, this room is too, because I think the last time I did it, it was quite a bit colder. Because yeah, right now it's it's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, that's very odd. And at the beginning, it was uh, like I'd mentioned a couple of months ago. It was just kind of like flickering, like the screen was kind of arcing a bit. And uh, just when it first started up, it started doing it, but that is really weird. Well, nonetheless, let's see, sounds like I'm only getting right speaker as well. Yeah, left speaker, that one's not working. I've got some parts laying around here, so I think what I'll do is uh, try and take that apart and see what's going on with the, uh, the other speaker. So, uh, yeah. Just uh, some maintenance work on this piece here, and we'll see if we can uh, get this thing to act pretty normal constantly. Well, let's turn this thing off here, and I'll pull this thing out. And let's see, turn this off. Turn that off, and uh, we'll turn this off here. I'm gonna have to unplug this thing from the strip. I just removed the strip here so I can pull this out a little bit more. This thing's got my six slot in it, so. Ah, nothing's wedged in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to do this one-handed. But, let's see. Let's see if I can find some place to uh, put the camera. Actually, you know what? I'll just pull this thing out here, and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. So I'll be back in a second. All right, so as you guys can see here, we've got this thing all pulled out from the wall. I've got a space there. We have this thing unplugged here. This is the uh, the cord that's actually plugged into this. So I'm going to make sure you got everything unplugged there. And uh, yeah, what we're going to do here is try and detach the old uh, monitor chassis from the monitor and take that out and give it a good look-see and see how it is. Uh, see if there's anything that needs to be done on it. Uh, I don't have the uh, capacitors and stuff that will be needed for it in order to do a... Uh, monitor recap, but nonetheless, I want to take a look at the bottom of it and see if there's any like really bad traces or anything like that that I can kind of work on as of right now. In order to go down and get caps for this thing, I'm gonna have to go down to Akihabara, so it's gonna be a bit of a trip. But nonetheless, we'll try and take a look at this thing and see how it is, uh, see what it's like, and hopefully be able to get this thing to produce a more of a positive image here without the, all that arcing going on. So. Let's uh let's go to the next part here, which is going to be removing the uh, the monitor chassis. And what we're going to do for this here is we have our uh, trusty screwdriver with our rubber gloves and a gator clip here that's connected to this in order to uh, ground out up underneath the cap there. And want to make sure that you get a uh, a really good a good connection here don't want this thing to be sticking to dirt or anything like that. 
Um, and as you can see, we're trying to do this with the uh, the camera being held, which isn't the uh, easiest. And the reason why we're doing this is uh, to prevent getting shocked um, severely. So can't uh, can't get a good angle in here. Let's try over here. Um, you know, make sure that uh, this screwdriver is completely grounded out before you start uh, messing around with the cap because this thing is, uh, you know, highly uh, charged. And there are two clips in there, which I'm trying to uh, trying to get out, but it's very difficult to see on there on the inside where these clips are. Well, probably should be using a bit of a bigger screwdriver here. And this suction cup is on there really, really tight. <laughs> so <laughs> I tell you what, I might have to uh, cut here if I can't get this thing out. Yeah, as this thing is just not wanting to come out, the suction cup is on there really, really good. But uh, there's normally two clips up underneath here that will uh, come loose. It feels like maybe one of them's come loose, but I just can't get past this suction cup. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is uh, I'm going to cut here, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, try and get another screwdriver or so, something that I can keep the suction cup up with, and then uh, get this thing out, because this is just not... Not working. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Just as I say that, I'm able to get this thing off. So, and my clip came right off too with that. So, let's put this back on here. And to avoid uh, this thing from recharging, we're going to stick the screwdriver back up inside of the tube here. Kind of keep this propped up there. What that's going to do is continually just, uh, you know, keep draining all the power from the tube. When I first um, started discharging monitors, I was, uh, you know, under the impression that uh, most of the board here had held a lot of the charge. And, uh, you know, it's a simple mistake that, you know, some people can make. But uh, when in reality, the charge is actually held by the monitor itself. Um, it's just like one big giant capacitor. So, uh, you know, with, with the help of uh, you know, other people, uh, it's something that was, you know, brought to my attention here. So it's one thing that you really want to be careful of when you are, uh, you know, discharging a monitor. Just try and make sure that you can keep this, this thing up in here. Kind of keep that up there so it's uh, it stays in there so it's constantly discharging. But uh, yeah, what we'll do next here is we'll try and get the rest of this board off now uh, and uh, remove it from the neck of this here of the... Uh, the monitor and then uh, take the screws off here and try and get this board out and take a look at it. So we'll go on to that right now. All right, so as you guys can see here, um, I've got the chassis. It's uh, detached from the bottom of the monitor here. But unfortunately, there's uh, quite a few spots. <laughs> My flashlight is dying. There's quite a few spots on here where the uh, the wires are actually soldered directly into the uh, the chassis board. So that's going to make it really tricky to uh, pull these things out. Uh, it will only come out just a little bit, and I'm not really in the mood here to go and desolder all of these different points. There's probably about, I don't know, one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, about fourteen points that are uh, soldered directly into the board here, which uh, is really a pain, you know, I thought everything was on connectors here. Unfortunately, unlike the, uh, the first one that I had, the first monitor was really easy to pull out the chassis board and all that, but this one here is uh, completely, yeah, just really soldered in there. So what I'm going to do is probably just try and work on this thing here. I'm going to tilt it on its side, try and remove it from this base plate here because this uh, base plate is keeping, uh, it's kind of restricting the bottom. You won't be able to see probably too well here. If I uh, try and do this one-handed. But... All 
don't know if you guys can see on the uh, the bottom here. Probably can't, but there's a plastic piece that's actually blocking the circuit board, so I'm gonna have to remove uh, remove some of the metal here so I can get at that. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see what we can do here about uh, getting the back of that off. And uh, I don't know if I can get any more light back here, but we'll see about that as well. Um, uh, yeah, let's try and get on that right now. All right, so as you guys can see here, I've got the uh, the back of the monitor chassis off here. And I was just going around the bottom here, just taking a look at some of these contact points, uh, some of these solder points on here. Some of them do look uh, a bit dried up and a bit dull. There's uh, some over here which look quite dull. I don't know if you guys can see those or not. They, they usually have uh, kind of like a gritty type look to them once they start to turn dull. Whereas uh, when they're really fresh, they're really shiny. And uh, a lot of these are looking kind of dull. You know, there's, there doesn't appear to be anything cracked, which is good. But nonetheless, it's not going to hurt to uh, go over this with some new solder here. And you know, granted, I might eventually have to do a cap kit on it. But since there's no real color bleeding going on, and uh, the monitor seems to look still pretty decent. I think it's just a, a bad short somewhere that's uh, that's causing the issues. Amazingly enough, sometimes all it is is just a uh, a bit of a cleaning or a little bit of solder. And like I'd mentioned with my other MBSU4, all it was was just I mean the whole bo bottom of the board was cracked here with uh, the solder joints. They were all really old. I put new fresh uh, solder on there, and the monitor just came right back to life. Also, you know, doing some cleaning on the uh, the yoke here as well, trying to clean that up. Sometimes it can just be a dirty connection issue that's uh, causing the problem. You know, it might also be the power supply down there, which I might have to take a look at. I do have another one that I took out of my other uh, Super Neo 29, but we'll uh, maybe swap those around. Maybe take a look at the inside of this one and see what's going on with that. But, yeah, nonetheless, I mean, yeah, this thing is uh, still working. I just gotta try and see if I can tweak it to make it just uh, that much better because I don't want this thing to just suddenly die on me. It's one of my uh, my prized possessions here so I'm gonna try and keep it uh, going as long as I can. But nonetheless what I'm gonna do is warm the old soldering pen up and then start going around these traces here and uh, these different solder points and reflow these solder. So I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I think we've got our soldering pen all warmed up here, and what we're going to do is just start going over these points and trying to uh, trying to tin them back up again here, just to uh, give them a better flow. What I'm doing is going around the flyback transformer here, especially it's because this one has a tendency to get uh, pretty dry, and these contact points here do not look, you know, the shiniest. They could definitely be better, so. Add a bit more solder to it, and it's not going to hurt it one bit, that's for sure. Get that going. I don't know how well you guys can see here. I'm kind of doing this on a bit of an angle, but I've just got the uh, camera kind of sitting on my other MVSU4. But to be honest, like I had mentioned before, it's really amazing what, you know, a little bit of solder can do, especially for these uh these older cabs. Just a little bit on the old monitor chassis parts and a little bit of cleaning, sometimes these things just spring back to life and you get uh, you know you get a really nice picture and you think wow that was all due just to uh, a little bit of um, you know, a little bit of solder so sometimes you gotta be careful when you go around uh, capacitors and things like that um, because uh, some of them do stay charged and if you do uh, you know accidentally for example, touch something with the uh, the end of the solder here, you'll wind up uh, getting a little bit of a zap. <laughs> so it's good to kind of be careful around that stuff. Hopefully my head's not in the way here. But 
But just to give you guys a little bit of a look here, you know, to see what I'm talking about as far as the, uh, the difference. You can see how this here that I've just gone over is uh, quite shiny, you know, even without the light as compared to uh, the ones next to them, quite dull. So if you look, uh, especially up here, this is dull. This is new solder. So there's quite a difference. It's a little bit more difficult to see, uh, except, you know, unless you're in person here. But there is a, a big difference between the old stuff and the new stuff. So what I'm going to do is just go around the different points on this board that I think look really uh, dried out and I'm gonna add some new fresh solder and then we'll clean the uh, clean the rest of the tube up put it back together and see what happens hopefully it'll get a bit better and uh, I also have to replace that speaker up here at the top so I'll do that as well but let's uh let's get this done here and put it back together all right so so far here what I've done is I've gone around the bottom of the board here I've also gone around every single uh, solder point here on the back of the neck board there aren't that many points so it's not too bad uh, it's really easy to get at all of them so I just went around each single one here to try and uh, tin them all up make sure that they have a good contact uh, because uh, you know it's really easy to get at them right here and uh, it'll help out in the future what happens sometimes here is around uh, the the cap here a lot of these break loose so it's uh it causes some problems but definitely going around all those I think that should help improve this thing or at least keep it stable for quite some time I've got the cap back on there the anode cap and uh, everything is pretty much ready to go uh, the next thing that I have to do here is I have to take my speaker and put the old speaker up here in the top so we'll open this up and replace the speaker all right, so while digging around in here, I found a, uh, a broken uh, wire here, which I just put a drop of solder on there, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, put uh, a little bit of tape on there. I don't have any more shrink wrap. I would put that on there if I had some, but uh, I don't have any right now. But uh, that was one of the issues. And then over here in the corner, uh, one of the, uh, the wires here was not pushed on all the way, so I just went and pushed that on, and hopefully that'll be our... Uh, our culprits uh, I'm hoping if not what we're gonna have to do is remove these screws here that are up in the front and we're gonna have to remove the uh, rest of the screws that are around the back here around the uh, the bezel and then that will allow the front part to flop forward so we'll uh, we'll give this a shot here and try and uh, <laughs> try and turn it on and see what happens all right, so we got this guy all plugged back in and uh, figured we could turn on the old switch kind of pushed back in here where it can kind of make a nice fit <laughs> and uh, give it a shot and see what happens. Oh, you can hear it's got left and right channel now. That's good. Good news, good news. sounded much much better and it doesn't look too bad I don't know if it really uh, changed a whole lot let me try and uh, turn this volume down a bit one thing I can definitely tell you is the uh, you know with the speaker work in there that's a definite a plus it sounds like it's uh, a little bit quieter Yeah, I haven't had this thing running because the last time, you know, when I turned it on, it was just making that uh, really bad kind of like surging thing. Which is still, you know, it still may be uh, an issue of the power supply, I don't know. But, I mean, as of right now, I don't know, it seems like it looks a lot better to me, I don't know. Maybe I'm uh, trying to look into it a little bit too much, but for the, uh, for the most part... I know that uh, by replacing that, uh, you know, replacing that wire there, I was able to get my putting my sound back, and by reflowing the solder and putting new solder on there, I know that didn't hurt it one bit. That, uh, that helped out a lot, I'm sure. But yeah, nonetheless, as you guys can see, the old uh, Super Neo 29 is going strong, and 
hopefully, uh, eventually, I can put up some more videos on this monster. I'm in the process of uh, trying to use the other bezel that I had for my other Super Neo 29. I'm trying to see if I can sun bleach that. Uh, it's taken a long time, and it really hasn't changed too much in color, so I'm going to try and maybe get some different kinds of uh, compounds to try and brighten it up a little bit if possible. And then once, I, uh, once I'm able to get that a little bit lighter, if I can, maybe I'll just swap that out with this one here and try and make this white like it should, it should be. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's looking pretty nice. I think uh, the picture quality looks a lot, lot better than uh, what it was looking before. Just looks a lot more clear and crisp, which I'm really happy about that. So... Nonetheless, just wanted to share this with you guys here. A little bit of a Saturday afternoon uh, kind of, um, you know, refurbishing, I suppose, of sorts. But nonetheless, that's about all for me for right now. Like always, I'll put up another video here soon. So, thanks for watching. Nesca. Nesca. It's amazing that these carts are still, uh, you know, seated properly because normally after uh what is it you know a little while of just regular mvs carts sitting in a uh one of the four slots or any of the the multi-slot boards they'll kind of lose contact and you'll go and turn it on you'll have glitches everywhere but yeah, for this one it seems to be pretty good it's been a while since i played uh big tournament golf or neo turf master i might have to go back and give that a shot <laughs> now that i got this thing working it'd be fun just to you know play a little bit of it but yeah definitely glad got the speakers working and uh the monitors going here so yeah that's it thanks for watching guys